Hi, welcome back everybody. Uh, more awful news actually from Nigeria, what a surprise. So a pastor and two others have been killed by Fulani militants in Kaduna, Nigeria. So on the 9th of September, earlier this week, um, it's been reported by International Christian Concern. You can find their content at persecution.org. Fulani militants attacked the Adara communities of Buda and Kamara Rimi in Kajuru local government area of Kaduna State. So again, it's Kaduna State. You may remember that. I think two weeks ago I did um, a piece about 20 military personnel being slaughtered in Kaduna State. Oh, and also internationally displaced peoples being attacked for a second time, in effect. So the first of these attacks in Kaduna State uh, took place in the Buddha community on September 6th. During the attack, the militants killed three people, including the local evangelical church winning all's pastor, who was 45 year old, that's so sad, Reverend Alubara Aldu. I'm so sorry for the pronunciation. Alongside the Reverend, Reverend, who were um, Adamu Tata, who was 40 and a father of four children, um, and Ishaku Peter, 37, who was a father of five. So they were all three killed. Another two people were kidnapped during this attack. And unfortunately, the current state of affairs in Nigeria is that captives are very seldom released unharmed or alive. So later the same day, the militants uh, abducted five people from the town of Kamara Rimi. These five were named Ojo Aminu, who was 35, Dan Fulani Makaranta, 37, Namiji Gwamna, 36, Ali Musa, 36, and Grace Matthew, who was 16 years old. So far, no news or ransoms have been released at the time of this writing. So, um, without reading from this for a moment, um, the killing of another pastor, like this is how I came to be after much prayer, uh, interested and involved in Christian persecution, especially in Nigeria. I was um, told about a, a, a hostage video that was very inspiring for a Christian. The guy was calling for mercy and forgiveness for his captors and still preaching the gospel of the risen Lord during his captivity. So I looked into that, but I wanted to watch the video. It had sort of whizzed past me in a WhatsApp chat. Couldn't find it. And I just Googled these words and you can try it. A Nigerian pastor killed and I got I think 10 million 600,000 approximately search results and I assumed them to be duplicates and triplicates you know and most of them unfortunately were different stories um, I don't say most of them I only went through the first couple of pages before I found the guy that I was looking for I will post the link to that in the description box um, so going on um, the destruction of many Christian homes in this Christian-dominated area of the state again shows the hostility that Fulani militants have towards those who profess Christ as Lord. Many have been killed and injured, and many more have been internally displaced within their own region. So they are forced to go into, like, um, you know, like a, a, asylum-seeking camps. And as we see uh, very recently, those camps can be and have been attacked. Um, the governor of the state, who is Governor El Rifai, yet again has made no statements about the attacks. So apparently they're just uh, not important enough to be referenced by the governor of the state where these murders, kidnappings, uh, fires are being set and people are being, you know, chased from their homes. His silence, says persecution.org, on the many attacks on Christian villages is only outweighed by the complete absurdity when he makes comments on them in order to blame the victims for the violence. His bias toward and seeming support of the attackers has concerned many around the state and the world. Please pray around these attacks for these attackers and for these victims. Um, as I've said previously many times, these black lives don't seem to matter. Um, these Nigerian Christians have committed no crimes for which they're being arrested when something goes wrong or, you know, there's any police brutality. They are just being killed for their confession of their faith in Christ. And, you know, needless to say, it's, it's just absolutely dreadful. When one part of the church suffers, we all suffer, as we know the Bible says. And I'd like you to pray specifically for Nigeria, for Christians in Nigeria, and again, for Boko Haram, for ISWAP, 
for the Fulani militants. I pray that God would open their hearts and their minds to his truth, that they may cease persecuting our brothers and sisters. And I really do earnestly pray this, and I hope that you all can too. All right, God bless you all, and I'll be back again soon with another devastating story, to be fair. All right, God bless you. Bye-bye.